Hello, I'm Honey. Due to the emergency nature of this video, I'll be demonstrating the method first and then discussing the method afterwards. First off, you will need some hose, some baking soda, at least 500 millilitres of white vinegar, a measuring cup, and something that can hold at least 500 millilitres. You'll need a measuring spoon, ideally a tablespoon measure, and a stable plastic bag. This one is being reused. I had some wraps in here, but it's a nice sturdy bag. It hasn't got any holes in it. You can test, test the holes by inflating the bag. Ideally, I want you to do a dry run of this before attempting it. Even if you just used water to check your bag and test to see that you're going to be able to do the method because you don't want to mess it up halfway through. Okay, so first we're going to measure two cups of white vinegar with the measuring cup and pour it into our jar. Okay, now take your baking soda and measure three tablespoons into the bottom of this bag. Your bag needs to be large enough to accommodate the jar. So here is the container with the mouse in it. He's in this paper right here. Uh, I, this is a four litre container. I've cut the top off of it and then slid it in on the diagonal here. This is a good size for a small mouse. You might need a larger container if you're dealing with a rat or a slightly larger animal, but do not use this method for any animal over two pounds in weight. Only animals under two pounds in weight this method is suitable for. Okay, you need to make sure that your hose will fit into the hole. It's okay if there's a small gap because the gas produced by the reaction is actually heavier than the oxygen inside. So it will sink down and displace the oxygen that's lighter out of the top of the hole. It's good to have the cap so that the animal's contained and isn't going to escape while you're getting ready. Seal up your bag as much as you can before putting in the jar. And you might need some tape um, to wrap around depending on what type of bag you've got. Okay, so I've placed just a little bit of tape here at the top to prevent it unzipping. And just make sure that the end of the hose in the bag doesn't go into the fluid. You only want the gas produced by the reaction to go in the hose. Okay, because this mouse is getting quite active now, I'm going to make sure that I block the hole fully and he can't jump out. So I'm just going to plug it up with a bit of extra paper. Okay, so you've got the hose in there now. And you want to slowly pour half of the vinegar into the bag. There we go. You can see the balloon bag start to balloon up. You want to slowly increase the gas. So you can see that he's just sitting down there now and he's just a bit more sedated. You push this all the way down nearby him. Keep making the gas. Squeezing out the gas. That's it. We just want to keep making it so it's bubbling. Getting all the gas out. Squeezing in. And just uh, leave it for you know 20 minutes just to be 100% sure everything has stopped functioning and then you can uh, bury him or dispose of him how you need to. Thank you for staying to watch this part of the video. I want you to know that I care about animals very deeply and I wanted to be a vet or an animal rescue worker or something to do with animals my whole life. I never let my pets suffer and I've often taken them down to the vet at the last moment when they're elderly and they're not doing well or even wild animals that are injured I've taken them down to the vet to be euthanized. 
In fact, I've even made a documentary about how CO2 gas is an ineffective method for killing poultry in a controlled atmosphere killing setting. In fact, argon gas is the most effective for that scenario. In fact, the RSPCA website states that if you release rodents away from the location that they were captured, their survival rate is very low because they can't cope in a new environment. Last week, my pet rat with a respiratory infection suddenly became very ill late at night. I had been treating him with antibiotics, but they had failed to work. He started gasping for air and was opening his mouth to try and get air, and I did not want to see him suffocate to death. So I called the veterinarian and they told me it would be $140 to see the rat because it was late at night on the weekend. So although I don't have that, I did consider putting it on credit at the vet and then paying it off over time. But I decided to look on the internet instead and see if there was another option for at-home euthanasia. It turns out that CO2 gas is the only approved method by the American Veterinary Medical Association for euthanasia of small animals at home. They recommend using gas canisters, but this is not something people have at home, especially in an emergency situation. Also, a gas canister would be a very expensive option if you're trying to use this method for pest control. So I found a website that clearly and concisely explained the method using basic supplies. After reading through all the information, I found that CO2 gas doesn't just kill by asphyxiation, but actually induces an anesthesia beforehand. At high concentrations, the CO2 does indeed kill by hypoxemia, uh, but before that it does induce anaesthesia. By slowly increasing the levels of CO2 in the container, you avoid causing any pain associated with high concentrations of CO2. In fact, in tests with rats euthanized using this method, there were no signs of stress in their post-mortem blood tests. I don't want to kill an animal, and I refuse to use any method that will cause suffering to an animal, such as poison or glue traps or even a snap trap. I feel this method is humane because I used it on my pet rat first. I had my hand on my pet rat the whole time, and there was no signs of stress or struggling or gasping for air. He simply relaxed slowly and calmly and reduced his respiration rate until he just stopped breathing. There was no struggle to get out of the container, he wasn't panicking. I just rested my hand on him and he just slowly, slowly relaxed and passed away. In fact, in the past when I've witnessed a vet euthanize my pet rats, I actually feel that this method, by comparison, is more humane because when you take your rat to the vet you have the stress of transport, the stress of bringing him out into an environment that he's not used to and being handled by someone he's not used to being handled by and then the vet will take the rat firmly by the scruff and the neck and push his head into a small plastic cone and that cone uh, is connected to a gas canister and the gas is pumped into that cone and the rat will struggle and fight against the cone and the vet to not inhale the gas and after they've inhaled enough gas, they're taken into another area and then the vet injects uh, a chemical into their chest cavity to stop their heart. In fact, usually after the vet has euthanized a pet rat of mine, there's blood coming from their nose. And there was no blood coming from their nose after this method that I used myself at home. So I feel that the stress of taking them to the vet to be euthanized is in fact not worth it based on what I observed. My rat didn't show any signs of stress and I would not stand for him being stressed. So uh, this is actually going to be my preferred method for my small pets because I'm fully in control of the situation and they're not in a stressed environment and they're able to go very peacefully. My observations of euthanizing my pet rat meant that I felt comfortable to perform it on wild animals. Obviously wild animals are generally moving around a lot anyway so it can be a little bit tricky to tell if they're just moving around because they're wild or if it's because they're stressed. But I know that my rat was not stressed when I euthanized him with this method, so I'm sure that the, the small mice are not being stressed out either because they're receiving the same concentration as I used for my rat, so it's even more powerful for the mice. Ideally, I don't want to euthanize any animals, but New Zealand has a unique ecosystem and it needs protecting, and I know a lot of people believe it's very important to control the pests here in New Zealand. And it seems I can use a method that doesn't cause stress or pain to the animal. I will be using this method to control pests as I catch them. I only catch them in humane traps that don't cause any pain or suffering to them at that point. And then I put them into a larger container, catch them with a glove on, put them into the smaller container, and then administer the CO2 gas. I hope this video was clear and informative. 
and I strongly encourage you to click the link in the description box below because that will give you several other options for how to perform the euthanasia, much more in-depth information about the process and how the process works and different methods for different scenarios depending on the equipment you have and the situation you find yourself in. Thank you for watching.